ओके सो वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो सो फोर्स डिग्रेडेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर ऑफ द मेथड वैलिडेशन एंड व्हेन इट कम्स टू रिलेटेड सब्सटेंसेस मेथड वैलिडेशन वन हैज टू आल्सो इस्टेब्लिश द मास बैलेंस नाउ व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ इस्टेब्लिशिंग द मास बैलेंस बिकॉज वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड यू नो वेदर ऑल द डिग्रेडेंट्स आर गेटिंग डिटेक्टेड एंड क्वांटिफाइड ड्यूरिंग द रिलेटेड सब्सटेंसेस मेथड or whether my method is really a stability indicating in nature now for to understanding you know these two important aspects of the method one has to understand mass balance so in this video uh, we are going to talk about how one can establish the mass balance for the related substances method uh, during the first degradation study and here we go with the presentation now so as a part of this presentation i am going to walk you through uh, the 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 very fundamental definition of the conservation of the mass the law of conservation of the mass then what is the mass balance in related substances then what is acceptance criteria for mass balance and lastly why mass balance is required so let us begin our presentation with the very fundamental uh, law which is the law of conservation of the mass so what this law says the mass can neither be created nor be destroyed but can be transformed from one form to another form that indicates that whatever you know the substance or drug product we are going to treat during force degradation that is going to remain constant i mean you can transfer the substance to its degradants to its impurities but at the end the mass will never change and that is where it is very important to establish the mass balance of the reactant before and at the end of the reaction and that is what we are going to do as a mass balance calculation once the force degradation study is over see as a part of force degradation you might be conducting uh, alkali hydrolysis acid hydrolysis or photolytic degradation thermal degradation so there are many parameters which can be covered as a part of as a part of force degradation study but once the force degradation is completed what is your intention behind the force degradation you want to understand probably the uh, the impurities or the degradants generated because of the harsher condition that you are exposing to the sample now unless and until your method is able to detect those impurity will you be able to understand that you will not right and hence it is very important that your method must be able to detect all those degradants but this is the ideal situation and the requirement whether this ideal situation is really exist into your method or not this is something called as the mass balance uh, evaluation so when it comes to a mass balance you must understand the mass before degradation must be equal to mass after degradation now share the mass of what the mass of the api your principal component so the mass of the api may be in terms of milligram suppose you have taken 100 milligram of the api during degradation study right so this 100 milligram must also remain 100 milligram at the end of the degradation study now this 100 mg you know out of this 100 mg 10 mg might have converted into the degradants but the 90 must be your 90 mg must be the api's mass so 90 plus 10 will become again 100 mg so that is what the meaning of the mass before degradation must be a mass equal to must be a mass after a degradation study so the amount of api before force degradation is equal to amount of api after force degradation plus amount of degradants so as we are expecting that api must undergo degradation the additional amount of degradants will also become the part of our sample once you conduct the force degradation study but the you know the ground reality is must be uh the amount of api before force degradation must be equal to amount of api after force degradation plus the amount of degradants 
Now, what is the amount of API before force degradation? How one can now conduct the or assess the amount of API before force degradation? And for that reason, you know, you need to have the analytical method to quantify your drug substance. So this can be done in two ways. Either you can use the validated assay method and measure the percent assay of the uh, your drug substance or the drug product. Alternatively, if you do not have the validated assay method for your API, you can also quantify your API by using related substances method with the adequate amount of the response. So understand, you know, what is the response that you are looking forward so that you will have the uh, precise assay result for your API. Then what is the amount of API after force degradation? Again, you need to conduct the assay of the degraded sample. As the sample has undergone degradation study, right, and you must have measured the impurities into it. Similarly, the same sample must also be studied for the assay of the APIs. And there are again two different approaches. Either you can use the validated assay method or you can use the related substances method but by increasing the concentration to a suitable level. So this will yield you, gives you the assay of your API into a degraded sample. What is the third important term? If you look at the equation given in the point number one, it is the amount of degradants. So how one can assess the amount of degradants? And this is the calculation formula. So the amount of degradants is equal to percent impurities after force degradation minus percent impurities before force degradation. See, your drug product or drug substance might have also contained the sum of the impurities before you start the force degradation. Then what is the actual degradants? You need, to, you need to evaluate the entire impurities out of the force degradation sample and then subtract whatever impurities were available into the undegraded sample, untreated sample. And that gives you the amount of degradants. And here is the calculation formula onto your skin now, onto your screen. So the mass balance, you know, uh, is equal to the percent assay of API after force degradation plus the percent degradants divided by the percent assay of API before force degradation and multiplied by 100 to convert this mass balance terms into a percent form. So I hope now this calculation formula is very important as per as the evaluation of mass balance is concerned. And here is an example of the mass balance. So for example, you know, you are conducting a force degradation study, let us say acid hydrolysis and as a part of that, you have prepared a sample and measure the percent assay of that sample before conducting the force degradation, right? So this sample need not to be exposed to the acid hydrolysis. You can prepare the sample as such without any treatment to just understand the assay of or the potency of the drug substance into a product. And let us assume that it is the 98%. So the 98% is the assay of untreated sample. Okay. Then percent total impurities present into that untreated sample before conducting the forced degradation study is found to be a 1.5%. <clears throat> then uh, you have conducted the acid hydrolysis that is the, you know, that is supposed to conduct. And after you conduct the forced uh, the acid hydrolysis, you have measured the assay of degraded sample and it is found to be 95%. At the end of force degradation study, you also observe that the 3.5% of the impurities were observed into the degraded sample. Now what is the percentage degradants? So the percent degradants is what? The difference between the total impurities observed in the force degradation sample and the total impurities present into as such or untreated sample. So as we know that the impurities present in as untreated sample is 1.5%. So 3.5% minus 1.5% gives the percentage degradants actually happened occurred as a part of acid hydrolysis. And if you substitute all these figures into the equation of the percent mass balance, you will find that 
the uh, the assay of uh, drug substance before forced degradation is 98 uh, sorry the assay of drug substance after forced degradation is 95 and here is the 95 comes here then the plus 2 percent is what the percent degradants divided by assay of untreated sample which is 98 percent into 100 gives 98.98 percent 98.98 percent is your mass balance so this is the way how the mass balance can be calculated for the related substances uh, for degradation study so let us understand now how one can define the acceptance criteria for the mass balance so if you look at the regulatory guidelines no one has clearly defined the acceptance criteria for the mass balance and mass balance as far as the industry practices is concerned uh, the not less than 95 percent is widely followed in many organizations so the last one is now why one how to have the mass balance evaluation during the forced degradation study and it has to be only done for the related substances not required for the assay or any another test parameters the first point is to conclude that method can detect all degradants right because you are uh, degrading the sample and your intention is what to understand the uh, the uh, probably the, the pathways of the degradants right and if you need to understand the pathways of the degradants if you want to confirm that the all degradants which are possible into the given set of degradation study are really detected or not it is only possible with the help of mass balance approach if i have 100 mg of the uh, 100 mg of the api at the beginning of degradation study and how much you know now the entire mass of the api plus all possible degradants and that is what is going to confirm and conclude that all degradants are really getting detected if we achieve 100 percent or close to 100 percent mass balance the second important point is what to conclude that yes now as there are uh, there is a mass balance established that means though there are degradants coming out of the degradation study those are suitably getting quantified so as a part of now my stability study as the drug substance or drug product is also going to expose to the possible environmental conditions like temperature or humidity change there may be a light uh, exposure to the product right maybe because of the inherent nature of the drug substance if it is prone to degrade into the acid or alkali conditions now i have the data that yes in those conditions i have proved that the all degradants are well separated and i also achieved the mass balance and hence my method is going to be a stability indicating in nature right but in most of the cases sometimes you may achieve or sometimes you may fail in achieving the mass balance we just saw an example of you know uh, in the acid hydrolysis how we calculated the mass balance of 98.98 percent .98%. but let me also show you a reason or uh, an example where the mass balance looks like a fail and here is the stability study now so you have conducted the stability study and your initial assay of the drug product is 99%. The percent total impurities at the initial analysis was found to be 1%. And as a part of stability study now, you have withdrawn 6 month accelerated sample and you noted that the percent assay is only 90%. Right? And the total impurities is found to be 2%. So can you see that whether the mass balance in this example is really achieved or not achieved? see the initial assay is 99 percent and if you look at the assay at six months it is only 90 percent so what is the increment into the degradants you supposed to ex uh, expect right as there is a drop in assay of nine percent you must expect nine percent increment into the impurities right your assay has dropped by nine percent 99 was the initial assay the six month assay is 90%. So there is a drop in 9% assay. So to have the mass balance, you can expect 9% must be now reflects into the impurities. But how much impurities have got increased? 
it's two percent is total impurities so the increase in impurities again only one percent because initially there were one percent impurities present right so 90 plus one impure one percent additional impurities becomes 91 percent still there is a gap of almost eight uh, how much 90 plus 1 91 and this is 99 so 99 minus uh, you can say almost 91 so it becomes 8 percent so there is a loss of 8 percent mass right there is a loss of 8 percent mass and you cannot say that you know whether uh, your method is really now a stability indicating in nature because you are not able to establish the mass balance so this is where it is very important to look at the mass balance uh, assessment even during the practical stability study okay so i hope now you must have understand you know how the mass balance can be established what is the calculation details involved into it why one must have the mass balance in the place and how you must be vigilant curious you know alert in understanding whether my mass balance is start getting reflected during the stability study as well so thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of informative and useful video till then take care and bye bye see you soon